this is Chicho. Now, in the last reading set uh, for set number three um, of the comic book readings that we put out, uh, somebody uh, posted a comment requesting that um, I go through um, the comics that I'm sort of buying right now, sort of let you know um, what it is that I'm getting from the comic book store, um, what I'm subscribed to basically, right? What's going into my pull box. And um, I thought it was a great idea because what we've done uh, with the comic book reading so far is basically read what has been in my collection. I think we did a couple of readings of books that I picked up recently, one of them being in the last reading set was Joe Sacco's uh, uh, The Fixer and other stories, right? But in general, what we've done is uh, in the readings is uh, gone through what's in my collection. So we've done readings from comics from the 1940s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, and some of the 2000s as well. But I haven't really delved into what it is that I'm picking up right now at the comic book store um, other than everything Valiant right as I've mentioned in uh, in my previous videos I sort of switched gears and started subscribing to everything that Valiant's uh, putting out and I've been doing some serious catching up in that in that area and there is a fair bit of Valiant that I'm going to show you in this in this video okay so what I wanted to do is sort of um, let you know what it is that I'm buying right now and there's basically three different versions of comics here, three different uh, groups of comics that I have here. One of them, one group is basically what I'm pulling uh, every month or every, every if it's coming up bi-monthly, every two months, right? And that's basically the comics on my pull box, what I'm subscribed to, that the comic book store owner, whenever they come in, they put in, you know, under my name and I go in there and um, every week or every second week or whenever I go in, if there's anything in my box, I pick it up, right? Um, another bunch of comics here that I got um, is comics that I randomly pick up from the new releases, right? So whenever I go to a comic book store, I sort of scan the new releases and, uh, you know, check out random comics or, you know, pick a comic for a few months and sit down and read it if I get a chance. Sometimes I don't and I forget about it. And those are the only issues I have of that comic, right? Uh, and there's a bunch of comics I have on there, you know, that I'm going to show you. And there's a bunch of uh, trade paperbacks um, because I do like tr reading trades as well. So I do pick up uh, a trade here and there sometimes uh, or sometimes a lot of trades, right? Um, so that's what we're going to do in this video. And thank you for the person uh, that requested this video. I think it's a great, uh, great way to sort of uh, uh, end this third reading set, right? Sort of give you an idea of what it is that I'm picking up right now, uh, because there's some amazing comic books being put out right now. And I really don't... Uh, you know, don't want to do readings for those because I, I'm sort of immersed in them, enjoying them, and um, and they are out right now, so they should be fairly easy. Some of them, anyway, uh, to get a hold of. Okay, so as far as uh, comics in my pull box, right? Uh, what I what I'm subscribed to, what I get every month, or whenever the issue is released, right? Um, one of the one of the most recent comics that I've added to my collection, okay, to my pull box, and I, this is as far as I know, this is a continuing series, and I hope it continues on for a very, very, very long time because the first two issues absolutely blew me away, okay, and they're these two comics back here, okay, monstrous, absolutely fantastic fantastic read and this thing is um, by Marjorie Liu and Sana Takeda and uh, Sana Takeda I believe is the Japanese artist she's uh, I've seen some of her work right and it's absolutely brilliant art and I've never read uh, Marjorie Liu's uh, comics I don't I don't believe so anyway and this thing was absolutely magnificent I picked it up and it's you know, it blows away, you know, as far as bang for your buck, it blew away anything else out there. The price of this thing was, I don't know, five, yeah, five dollars US, right? 
it was like 60 pages of story like tripled almost anything being put out by the big two right marvel and dc and it told a story and introduced characters uh got you to love the characters and hate the characters in one issue uh, set up a brilliant universe with multiple different types of creatures and and this is sort of on the as you know i love my science fiction and fantasy and this is sort of on the level of sci-fi and fantasy sort of mixed together um and it was fantastic and this is issue number two and this came out last week or the week before i think it was last week um and it's absolutely fantastic and i picked up as soon as i read it I, you know this was one on one of the scans i did right i went and picked up my comics in my pull box and i went to the new releases and sort of scanned the wall to see what's on there and this was there and it looked beautiful the artwork's fantastic right and i flipped through it and I thought it looked amazing there was all you know there was a fair bit of text so it wasn't just the art that was part you know what the selling point is there was a story there i didn't read the story and i looked at the size of this thing and it was absolutely brilliant i was i was craving to sit down and read something large more than just one floppy one story that i have to wait another month right so this thing was fantastic i read it and i went back to the comic book store and I picked up a handful of issue number one when it came out. And I picked up just last week, on the, in the last week, I've picked up a handful of issue number twos. Um, because I think this is going to be an amazing series. It blew me away, really. It was fantastic. It's one of the best reads I've had uh, as far as new issues goes for a long time. Okay. Now, what else? What else? Um, so what I want to do for just to tell you what i've been reading is um, because i'm picking up a lot of valiants i'm going to flip between a non-valiant and valiant and then a couple of non-valiants and valiant and stuff okay now the other thing that i just recently finished let me pull these out as you know i've been uh, you know on the hunt i've been going into comic book stores on ebay conventions um you know in the one dollar boxes and the packages of comic books where they sell stuff like because they're trying to get rid of uh for the last year year and a half or so i've been uh trying to fill my valiant collection i've been on a serious um, buying spree for valiance because i started reading uh, the relaunch of the valiance in 2012 and it you know i just got sucked in and it's a brilliant universe they're being they've been they've created and uh because i've been taking me a few months to get some of these issues everything's you know nothing's in order right so you know i've been having a hard time trying to uh, read the floppies one at a time so valiant uh what they did a couple of months ago they did a sale on their trade paperbacks and what i ended up doing was picking up all of Archer and Armstrong, right? The whole story arc. And they were, everything was 50% off. So for, I don't know how many, there is, there is two, four, six, right? Six trades, um, there's 25 issues, right? And I just sat down and read Archer and Armstrong. Awesome. Like, um, I like my politics. I like my conspiracies. I like my superheroes. I like funny. I like crazy. I like historical reference pieces. Um, and wow, this thing was absolutely amazing. So, and it's, as far as I'm concerned, it was crucial reading for the Valiant universe. Okay. So if you're reading Valiant's, um, it's pretty important to read Archer and Armstrong because it sort of sets the the stage for how the world functions economically, politically, all the different factions that are involved, uh, the different sects that rule the world, and it's it's like it's amazing, and it, you know it does contemporary, present day stuff, and it goes back in history, um, like it tells the story of Epic of Gilgamesh. Uh, the way I've never heard it before, right? I, many, many years ago, I read the Epic of Gilgamesh and I've read 
some write-ups on the Epic of Gilgamesh. And Epic of Gilgamesh is considered to be the first book ever written um, in our civilization, current civilization anyway. And Archer and Armstrong does a take on it. And it's, it was fantastic. Okay. So Archer and Armstrong, they're not, I think they're doing an, they're relaunching again, Archer and Armstrong. I think so in 2016. And I'm going to be all over that. Um, but if you want Valiant Reads, Archer and Armstrong, um, if you can get the sales on the trade paperbacks, sweet. Because I picked these up for, they're selling for, I gotta put my glasses on. I forget what they are. They're like eight bucks or something. So I picked up each one for like four bucks. So for $24, actually they're like $15 for seven times, uh, seven times six. So 40, for 42 bucks, uh, you will be entertained big time, big time. And uh, you're gonna fall in love with these characters, okay? Um, that was uh, that was the Valiant, and I, as you can tell, I'm I've totally immersed myself in the Valiant universe, and I'm loving everything I read, right? Um, so as soon as uh, Archer and Armstrong, the next issue comes out, I'm picking that up, and I'm picking up every Valiant. I've told uh, the comic books, comic book. Uh, store where i have my pull box any new valiance coming in just sign me up for it right just put one in there now another uh, actually three comic books that i just recently picked up and um, i picked these up in the last couple of weeks one of them uh, this week two of them this week i can't remember because these were in a pile for me to read i really wanted to read these right um it's from a new comic book company called aftershock okay and uh, i wasn't really sure what to expect of these guys uh, and i read replica number one okay uh, it was it was a good read it got me intrigued i added it to my pull box okay and usually for me the way i add comic books to to what i'm getting every month is uh, you know whatever i scan for the new releases I end up reading one, two, or three issues. And if I'm, you know, I like what's being told in the first two or three issues, um, if it goes that far, I add it to my to my box, right? I pull it every month. And I just added this, um, this week, right? I picked it up a couple of weeks ago, I believe, and read it, I liked it, but I wasn't sure what to expect until I read the next uh, two issues and these are number ones, replica number one, uh, insects, uh, number one. And I read this one too. I haven't added this to my pull box yet. And I just read, uh, super zero number one. And it was awesome. Really? It was very good. I liked it better than, uh, uh than replica and insects. Um, replica is sort of, uh, it reminded me of, uh, I don't want to do the comparison because uh, the series I'm about to compare it to is absolutely brilliant, right? If you haven't read it, uh, you're missing out, which is Transmetropolitan, right? But as soon as I started flipping through this, it reminded me of Transmetropolitan. But Transmetropolitan has a whole library, it's a whole story from beginning to end under its belt. Uh, and issue number one of Transmetropolitan really grabbed me right off the bat. This one got me intrigued. So I don't think it's a fair comparison to comparing it to that, but it reminded me of that. So if you're into that kind of story, um, this was good, fantastic artwork, um, sci-fi, uh, sort of a detective story in, in space where multiple races meet. Uh, I'm gonna give it a try for more than two or three issues. Uh, insects. Uh, it was intriguing. It was interesting. I'm going to remember to grab it next month when it comes out. Read the second one before I add it because I don't want to add comics to my pull box uh, just on a whim on the first uh, first issue. And it was a good read. It got me intrigued. Uh, it was beautiful artwork. Um, I was sexy, sensual, um, horror, right? Interesting. And out of the three uh this was my favorite i i really didn't expect it 
I picked it up because it was aftershock. Uh, the cover really didn't appeal to me. It was afterwards, after reading the story, the cover is beautiful, right? Uh, it's fantastic. And there was, a, you know, I know there was one other alternate cover that I picked up as well, uh, just because I really like this. Um, I think it has fantastic potential. And um, I'm going to keep my eyes, my eyes out for all the number ones that uh, Aftershock is putting out and have a read through them and see if I like it. Okay. Uh, so those are some other ones I'm picking up. Uh, some of the recent read I did was uh, uh, Red Harbinger Omegas 1 to 3. Uh, I read Harbinger, uh, the relaunch uh, after the Harbinger Wars and to the end of it with Bloodshot. Uh, and I absolutely loved Harbinger. Uh, and Harbinger kicks off into this. After 25, it kicked into this. So I pulled these ones out out of my... Uh, I found them when I was going through them. So I pulled them out. I read them. Okay. Um, Another series that I just added to my uh, pull box. Okay, I read number one. I hadn't added it yet. I read number two. I liked, and uh, I love the character. And we just did a reading on it uh, in the third reading set, and that's Marvel's Carnage. Right. So I'm pulling this. Uh, I love the covers. Wow, the covers are very, very nice. Beautiful. Right. Uh, the story was good i love the way it started okay and it got me intrigued it's got brock in it uh it's gonna have toxin in it it's got the uh, wolfman or whatever his name is cover number two right so i'm pulling these Let me put these guys here i'm pulling these out of a short box so as i'm pulling them the other comics are sort of slipping back so I don't want them to have too much pressure on them right so I'm just replacing them um, another Valiant comics that I just picked up well picked up a couple of months ago that I finished about three weeks ago um, I've been picking up EXO Man of War Right. And the same story goes with Archer and Armstrong. You know, I've been filling, uh, uh, filling gaps and I still have gaps, I think, in the series. Uh, but I can't tell right now because nothing's ordered us all in three or four boxes of comics that I've picked up in the last year or so. Right. Um, so when Valiant had their uh, trade paperback sale, I bought all of EXO. Uh, how many trades? Uh, two, four, six, eight, eight trade trades. Um, I don't know what issue it goes to, uh, but I know I have the ones after that. Um, I still haven't read the ones after after that because I wanted to read all of EXO in chronological order. Um, and it's, it's very good. It's solid storytelling, uh, science fiction, right? Superhero, it's uh, uh, armor basically um i for me i i loved the archer armstrong story arc it's fantastic it's one of the best reasons i would recommend that to anyone right uh for exo if you're into more heavy um because i i relate more basically to archer and armstrong than i do to exo right um I like the storytelling, I like the sci-fi, but for me, I don't, uh, you know, uh, Eric is uh, a king, right? And I don't relate to monarchies. So for me, it's an archaic system to a certain degree, but I do love barbarian stories. So it's sort of a, a love and hate relationship because he is a barbarian, he's a king, and he's, uh, he's trying his best to, take care of his uh, uh, his subjects I guess his countrymen and women 
right? His clan. So it's a great storytelling, um, and it's uh, it's basically the staple of Valiant comics. So it is basically must reading uh, because EXO crosses over with uh, Unity and Archer and uh, Eternal Warrior and uh, and Ninjak and whatnot, right? So that's the exos that i've read recently another uh, series that i just recently added to my pull box and um, what's in my pull box is basically just to give you a heads up is everything valiant and when i decided to go everything valiant i dropped almost everything else okay so what i ended up doing uh, uh, you know budget for sure dictates it and i didn't have time to read everything else that i was collecting so i sort of went through filter filtered out almost everything else except for like five issues and said uh put the valiance on right and now that i've caught up with a lot of the valiance that i'm trying to catch up on uh i want to read uh you know i have time to read other stories so i've been introducing new titles to my to my collection and i just picked up uh and I just read basically uh, Thorn, Red Thorn from Vertical. Okay, this is issue number one. And I had bought this, I love the cover, uh, and it's Vertical. And, uh, you know, Vertical is the imprint of DC Comics, it's more adult oriented, amazing storytelling. They have a lot of horror, sci fi, uh, fantasy to a degree, right? Um, suspense. Uh, so I picked it up, and I picked up uh, number two this week that it came out again beautiful cover right and i sat down and i read number one after reading number one i was sort of mm, it didn't grab me right away but i know vertigo uh, and vertigo sometimes it takes a while to get going for you to be immersed in it right so i read number one and up to halfway through number two i still wasn't it wasn't still pulling me in and then the last four pages did it right so i went to the the comic book store um i actually have you know i'm doing sort of doing a transition right now so i have a pull box in one comic shop and i just started another one in another comic shop in a different city so uh to manage what i'm pulling in the new comic shop i started adding the new titles right and i just added this um, to my pull box and I'm looking forward to it. It was a it was a very good read okay. What else what else are we reading so Let's go back to Valiant One of the best things I've read this summer Was the book of death series Okay. And book of death one to four was absolutely fantastic okay. um, I haven't read uh, Legends of the Geomancer yet uh, because I don't have number one. I got two, three. Uh, I got two, three, um, two, three, and four, but I don't have number one. But I did read uh, Book of Death one to four. Right? Awesome read. It's a good jumping on point. Uh, uh, really, and it uh, gives you a serious appreciation for Eternal Warrior. Right? his uh, what he knows right how he looks at life the the way he approaches battle and he can take on anyone right wow eh? it was a very good storytelling uh, beautiful artwork right and book of death kicked into eternal warrior um, or wrath of the eternal warrior right and this is wrath of the eternal warrior number one and this is number two right so you can basically think of uh, wrath of the eternal warrior starting off with book of death number one because it is a straight out continuation uh, of the story number one picks up from there and it was a fantastic read really um everyone uh, in the valiant universe has always wondered what happens to um uh, the eternal warrior um when uh, when he dies and we find that in number one okay 
and it's fantastic very very cool story okay so book of death um, was one of the most recent things I read and the book of death series um, had four accompanying storylines with it okay and there were the fall of exo man of war very nice read right if you like exo it was a it was a good read uh, it had the fall of ninjak i think it's one of the best ninjak stories told and it was fantastic as well very good story beautiful artwork okay. um, it had fall of bloodshot amazing storytelling really reading this it it almost had a, it almost had a tear in my eye right if you know the bloodshot character right it was beautifully done i liked it better than uh, uh better than exo and ninjak fall of ninjak and in in my least favorite was exo it was still a good read uh, ninjak was very good too but fall of bloodshot was absolutely fantastic as was wow fall of harbinger talk about epic like fantastic halfway through i wasn't immersed in it yet and then it just just kicked up it was it was very very good and uh, uh, just by coincidence i guess uh, it's sort of uh, fall of harbinger was sort of uh, told in a way of uh, rye number zero the reading that we did because we do go through and uh, we do touch base with a lot of characters uh, to a certain degree uh, for Hall of Fall of Harbinger, and it was very good, very good storytelling. Really, Valiant is kicking it out of that park like they are blowing everything away uh, as a, as a universe goes, as a company, right? Because everything they're putting out is, as far as I'm concerned, is amazing. Okay. What else? We have this is a new series that I picked up. It's a it's a limited series. Um, and it's uh, basically artwork and um, Eastman uh, I think Kevin Eastman uh, right. that's number one fantastic if you like I love Bisley's artwork at these my favorite comic book artist right and this is uh, number two and this series I don't know how many issues it's gonna run for I think it's gonna run for six I don't know four four to twelve I hope it's twelve uh, and it's a tribute to a fistful of dollars it's a tribute to spaghetti westerns uh, and they have an image of somebody that looks like Clint Eastwood in the background in this too uh, I don't know if it was number one or number two um, and it was very good so if you like Bisley's uh, Bisley's artwork and nice spaghetti western sort of a tribute to spaghetti western comics if you like uh, uh, the film it's a fantastic read or it's a fantastic comic uh, another comic that I just recently added to my pull list uh, is I hate fairyland super funny better than I expected really I picked it up because I love the cover it was and I love uh, well I love sort of carnage chaos and I love humor and this looked like it might work right sort of on the level of um, the reading that we did with uh, Barry Wayne and that was fantastic right um, and that was um, image comics uh, that put that out so I was hoping it would be something along those lines and it was it made me laugh out loud a couple of times it was very good for some reason I I put num I bought number two I hadn't read it I was waiting to read one and two and three together and I just read one and three I haven't read number two and number three was fantastic as well so I have to go back uh, on my boxes and uh, find number two and have a read through it but this has definitely been added to my uh, pull bin or pull box uh, another comic that i recently picked up was uh, again another mini series and it's uh, uh, it was it was amazing it was fantastic 
was uh, Superman, American alien. Okay, this is number one. As soon as I read the first issue here, it reminded me of uh, Grant Morrison's All Star Superman. Not to do a direct comparison, I hate to do this, but uh, it was it was beautiful storytelling, beautiful artwork, um, and it, it wasn't it wasn't just typical superhero comic just fight scenes and stuff it was building characters and showing a perspective of younger superman which was delightful all right it was fantastic and uh i just read uh, number two and again uh very nicely told fantastic story okay so i'm picking this up i'm going to read this for sure until um, the mini series is over now uh, just going back to valiant uh, for EXO Man of War, the trade paperbacks, uh, I realized I was missing a piece of the story because of a crossover that Valiant did, uh, I guess the year before, which was um, Armor Hunters, right? And um, by the time I realized that, uh, the sale on the trade paperbacks was already done. So what I ended up doing was going through the back bin, my, my boxes, and I pulled out almost all of the crossover for armor hunters there was one i think it was the unity one that i don't have it because i wasn't you know haven't been buying unity or I've been buying it after i decided to pull all valiants but i don't have the stuff before that right so um i haven't read the unity crossover with uh, armor hunters but what i did when i finished exo man of war i went through my boxes and I picked up all of the armor hunters and read those because it, it is a crucial story arc for the Valiant universe. Uh, they do refer to it. So um, I just recently read this. I guess this isn't part of my pull box, I guess, but it is sort of because it is sort of reading what I had previously put together, right? Uh, so again, is it is it crucial reading? Uh, pretty much for the Valiant universe. Uh, now, where are we in? Okay, and I am reading, you know, and I am pulling some other comics as well. But I'm really uh, far back on. I read, I read one or two issues of some of these, and what happened was. Uh, I was catching up on Valiant, so I, you know, I'm not caught up. So some of the other comics I'm pulling, um, one that I should be pulling that I picked up every month that I just forgot to add it to my pull list was Southern Bastards. So I have the first few issues of Southern Bastards. Um, a comic that I am pulling uh, on a monthly basis is pretty deadly from uh, Image. I'm also pulling... Uh, Tower Chronicles, right? Matt Wagner and Simon Bisley, and I've I read one issue and I haven't read the rest, so I'm way behind on this. Uh, I'm also pulling Manifest um, Manifest Destiny, right? This is number what is this one? Number seventeen and number eighteen, and um, I read one issue and I kept on pulling this, so I picked it up from the beginning. I do have all of them. But I haven't read them. Um, and another one that I'm pulling is Deadly Class. Okay. Again, I read one issue. I liked it. Decided to pull it, and I haven't. You know, I got to do some serious catching up there as well. Okay. Um, and I think those are all the ones that. Oh yeah, and I'm also um, pulling, of course. Uh, And I think those are all. And uh, another comic that I'm pulling is uh, Batman, Snyder's Batman. Uh, you know, I haven't. You know, I've read one, one and a half issues. Uh, good storytelling, and what it from what everyone the reviews say, it's amazing storytelling. Um, and the one issue I read was really good. But since I didn't pick it up from the beginning, I don't want to start picking it up halfway through. So 
I'm pulling it, um, but I don't have the early issues. So once I, you know, either buy and trade to read the early issues, I'll get, I'll catch up. I'll do a marathon on it. And that's basically more, you know, almost everything that I'm pulling. Um, one comic that I was pulling was uh, Samurai Jack. I read the first few issues and as soon as I switched over uh, to Valiance, I stopped pulling it. So I have the first, I think, seven or eight issues. Uh, and I just picked this one up out of the dollar bins. I can't believe it's in the dollar bin. It's Samurai Jack, right? And just for um, those of you who are interested in Samurai Jack, if you've watched the animation, and the animation is amazing, uh, they just announced that uh, uh, the original creators are coming back and they're going to continue the story with a new series. Uh, so I was ecstatic about that. Uh, another comic that I just recently read um, was uh, in the dollar bins I found this. Hellblazer 300 and I hadn't, I'd never read Hellblazer 300. I've read into the hundreds. I haven't, I've read some of 200. So I have gaps in my Hellblazer read and this was a gap so I read it. It was fantastic, awesome read. Hellblazer's always awesome to read. Um, as far as what I'm tracking, what I'm pulling once I get a chance to read them, I like Invader Zim, so I'm keeping an eye out for Invader Zim. I hadn't, I haven't added it to my pull box yet. So uh, I just recently read Limbo, number one. I'm thinking about adding this to my pull box. Uh, it was a good story. It was uh, sort of detective noir with horror, sort of Shadow Man feel to it, right? And Valiant's Shadow Man is not around. So this might be a good alternative. Okay. So I'm going to, I read number one. I'm going to read number two, see if I want to continue it. Uh, I've been, you know, pulling, not pulling, but picking up Airboy. Uh, I read a few pages. I liked it. I liked the art. So I'm just picking it up. I haven't started reading it yet, so I can't really tell you how I feel about it. Um, and everybody needs a little bit of candy, I guess, uh, sort of. And I picked up, I do plan on reading this just to see what they do because I do like Deadpool uh, so what I did was uh, pick up Gwynpool uh, number one and um, and then I found out that uh, Gwynpool I guess Gwynpool made the first appearance of a cover of a Deadpool comic uh, of the new series and uh, she the first story was told in Howard the Duck as a backup story down here so I picked this up I haven't read these um, I'm gonna read them see what happens and let's see what else Oop. yeah this is Snyder's Batman the most recent one where Joker comes back I know what's going on I'm just not reading it um, sort of know what's going on not really but and those are basically the flop is uh, what I'm picking up on a monthly basis okay and uh, one thing that I do when I go to comic book stores is um, I look for sales right and comic book stores a lot of comic book stores do put out sales right sometimes they do 50% um, off sales sometimes they have their trade paperbacks on sale and whatnot so let me grab these trades. These guys here. Oh, here's the one that I just actually. So one other trade I just want to give a note to because uh, this can be read anytime is um, I watched the movie Snowpiercer when it came out and I loved that I dystopian science fiction. So I went online and I bought Snowpiercer, uh, the French trade paperback. That's what it was based on. Uh, number one and number two and they're fantastic really good read so if you want a little sci-fi um, amazing read with beautiful artwork uh, well worth well worth it okay so Snowpiercer I read uh, last year maybe earlier this year I don't I can't remember when it came out when I read it 
um, I picked up three other trade paperbacks uh, recently in the last couple of weeks, uh, two weeks ago, um, from one of the comic book stores I go to. They had a 50% off of trade paper bags in an area. So this was sort of came out of out of nowhere. They hadn't announced this and uh, uh, I guess they were, you know, some people were trying to get rid of some trays or they were trying to lighten their load. So they had trade paperbacks for 50% off and uh, you know, I do have a budget. So I went through it and I was like, wow, I wish I could grab a whole bunch more, but I did end up grabbing four. And um, I've been wanting to read some more Alan Moore, right? Um, or read something heavy like Alan Moore. Um, it's either Alan Moore or uh, Grant Morrison. I like reading when I get the feeling to read something like that. Garth Ennis does it as well sometimes. Um, but I picked up Alan Moore's uh, Swamp Thing and I've read uh, Swamp Thing, um, Alan Moore's run Swamp Thing um, from John Constantine and up a little bit and I hadn't read the earlier issues and this one is uh, tells the Alan Moore's uh, start, not the start, there was one issue before this where he started so this was the first basically Alan Moore re, uh, rethinking Swamp Thing and wow, I forget how cryptic his earlier some of the Swamp Thing uh, work was, but super cryptic, a fantastic read. And it continued on with this. And this was a fantastic read as well, especially the, um, there's an issue in this, in the second one, where they, he did a sort of a standalone um, story with uh, chapter six with these little aliens and wow what a great little standalone comic right what a great little standalone so if you want to i don't know what number it is um it doesn't say it some of these trade paperbacks uh, they didn't in you know the earlier stuff and this is from 1980s i think because it's a first print and there were first prints and um yeah 1987 this one and this one was uh i can't remember anyway it was the second one it was they're both first prints and 50 percent off so off cover price fantastic um i just started reading this uh last night a life force will eisner amazing i'm uh if i remember i gotta remember to put this on my list but for my next reading set i'm pretty sure we're going to do a reading from this ah oh, amazing right there's a little quote here from uh, uh crumb where he says uh, i think this is eisner's uh, best work of all time a masterpiece i read that i was like really crumb Eisner's best work I started reading it it was fantastic holy just this wow just this right up if you've read Eisner just this right up like if we you know if I remember to add this to the next reading set this is what we're gonna read wow wow you know talk about uh, brilliance right and another thing that I picked up I couldn't believe it I was so happy with this so happy with this half price so I picked this up this was like $25 the cover price on it and I picked it up for $12.50 Wally Wood Strange Worlds of Science Fiction As you know, we've, you know, I love my EC Comics. We've put out three videos so far of EC Comics. And I'm pretty sure I might have a couple of these stories uh, in this book anyway. Hopefully I do, maybe. Either way, wow, eh? Look at this. I'm gonna hit this up as soon as I finish uh, Will Eisner, right? Fantastic. So these are, you know, I guess four 
other trays that I recently picked up um, that I'm reading um, and just on the EC notes I went to uh, let me bring these here this is gonna be awesome um, I just went to a recent comic book convention very small one in Victoria it's super small right just in a hotel just in a lobby and not in the lobby but in one of the rooms right and um, you know I like going to small conventions comic book shows because you can pick up books and talk to people and uh, there isn't that many people around right uh, and you can get good deals right if you're doing nice buys so you know I bought some comics from one this from this one vendor and you know they had a huge they had like six tables set up and I went around and I noticed they had these things amazing stories and these are comics but a lot of comic books used uh, stories from these to you know put together comics and these are short stories right so amazing stories and this is uh, volume 20 number 9 December 1946 right and I bought four sets of these right for $25 right reading for I mean this would be reading for I don't know how long like a long time right I think like this some amazing sci-fi this one is from 1949 okay fall 1949 and these things are you know they're very crumbly right uh, this was 1950 fantastic adventures and what these things are basically the annuals they're like the EC annual so whatever didn't sell would get shipped back to the publisher and they would rebind it I mean you can tell here sort of right they rebound it as a trade paperback or collection annual whatever we want to think about this is and sold it right and they were selling this for 50 cents look at the number of stories on this awesome right and uh, very cool so I bought these and I had grabbed like three of these or a couple of these anyway and I was still flipping through <laughs> I came across iRobot and the reason if you've been following the third reading set right we read the trial of Adam Link the trial of this robot the second part of this story as one of the readings in weird science fantasy number 28 right and like I hadn't like running into this at a small comic book convention in Victoria was absolutely amazing I haven't read it yet and it's the first uh, I opened it up to take a look at it I gotta sit down and uh, you know I can't be laying down or whatnot I want to lay this lay this down on the table because I don't want to do any more damage to this is it is very crumbly it's from 1939 volume 13 volume 13 number 9 January 1939 of amazing, amazing stories and it's got the story of I robot from um, endo binder right and initially when I was reading uh, doing the research for uh, uh, weird science fantasy number 28 that we're going we're going to read um, for the trial of Adam Link when I was doing the editing to find out what I robot they were referring to Isaac Asimov wrote an I robot story as well but it was decades after this right so initially I thought weird science fantasy number 28 was based on Isaac Asimov Asimov book but that came out before Asimov's story so I sort of did a little bit more digging and I found out it was this one so awesome I'm very happy to have this in my collection right and it's a short story it's not a comic book but it does have a, a beautiful splash page of the robot um, as the front page of it so maybe we'll do this as a reading as well um, and just uh just to wrap up there's a couple of things I wanted to uh, I want to mention one of them is if you're into buying trade paperbacks keep your eye out on your local comic shop because in the last year and a half or so I ended up buying a lot of trade paperbacks for two dollars a pop 
at one of the comic book stores I go to and some of them this is one bunch I'll show you the other bunch some of them have a line on the tops right and these are either you know the rejects or they were called back or um, they're basically stuff that wasn't selling that the publisher said you know put a line through it and do whatever you want to it so putting a line through the top of it I guess sort of takes the value away from it but for two dollars they're fantastic reads well for me they don't take the value away from it either uh, but uh, they're fantastic reads so I was very happy to pick up uh, you know all these trays that I'm about to show you I picked up all of these for two dollars a pop right and these were and I picked up a you know at least triple this from the comic book store in the last year and a half uh, and I've gone through most of it and this is some of the ones that really stood out that I really liked um, okay and some of them I've, I reread some of them I was reading for the first time I think maybe most of these I was reading for the first time but I'll just show you and I won't discuss what they are but uh, <laughs> funny read right uh, falling in love with L Lionheart I guess I should say what this is this is the tragic tragic tale of turkey boy and it was a very good read very good read uh, pleasantly surprised falling for Lionheart uh, nice read uh, this was fantastic I die at midnight fantastic storytelling very cartoonish uh, Dick Tracy and I didn't know this but uh, I like the Dick Tracy movie and when I when I finished reading this I found out that this was telling the story before the Dick Tracy movie so if you really want to know what's going on in the movie Dick Tracy uh, to a certain degree you need to read the first two parts of this right it was a great read um, at some point I'm gonna go back and pick, pick up the whole set for this exterminators uh, they just had two trades uh, and I read them both and I really like them and uh, I do want to read more so and I'm interested in reading the whole thing um, I'd never read Warren Ellis's uh, Stormwatch right so one and two right I read these I believe this is one and two I read these a few months ago so uh, one and two uh, it was a very nice superhero read right okay. and they're not uh, you know only some of them had the lines uh, drawn, drawn across, right? Let me show you these other ones too. Um, I'd never even heard of this. Okay. Peter Milligan, The Program. Uh, I do want to go back and pick this whole set up and read it. I really like that. Love the art style. Love the story. Okay. Um, the Badger fantastic read light-hearted fun right and I read some of the Badger when it first came out so this was sort of nostalgic to me reading it uh, put a smile on my face because uh, uh, it brought back memories and it was fun storytelling and the character Badger I really like I really hope they do you know somebody does something with it I think they might have uh, at some point I do want to go and read all of uh, rising uh, rising stars okay who wrote this I forget who wrote this uh, it was a great read uh, pencils ink Michael Strazinski J Michael Strazinski uh, it was a very good read I liked it okay uh, this was excellent as well uh, I'm not sure if this is the whole story or not I don't know if it is it sounded like it was the ending but I don't think so um, again Michael Strazinski I'll show you the name okay fantastic read Midnight Nation okay uh, great storytelling very great very good storytelling this would make an amazing TV series right? uh, 
always, always into reading Grendel. So if I see a sale on Grendel trade paperbacks, I pick it up and I read it. Matt Wagner, Grendel Tales, right? Excellent read, excellent read. Four Devils, One Hell, right? And we did the uh, reading for uh, the first appearance of Grendel in, I think it was the first comic book reading set that we did, I think, right? And I picked up uh, Devil Quest, Matt Wagner again. Uh, it was a nice, shorter read, but nice read. Confusing at first, but a great read. Um, another one that I picked up during the last year that uh, I read once, and I read it again, uh, and I had a better appreciation for it on the second read. And I thought it was very, very well done, which is uh, Registry of Death. Uh, really, the first time I, maybe I wasn't in the mood. Uh, right now I'm, I'm into the sort of the chaos, the carnage read and dystopian societies. And this was incredibly well done. You could, you could tell the amount of you know, heart and soul that went into it, into the story. It was very good. And another one that uh, I picked up, look at this. They put a line through it for two bucks. Um, great read. Winner of the 2003 Dan Hemmings Prize forward by Graham Garden Climate, a novel, a climatic novel in three parts. Okay. It was a great read. Nice storytelling. Very unique art. It's very, uh, very underground, right? And it was uh, by David uh, Trumbull. I don't know. I don't know David Trumbull. This is the first thing I've read of him. I think anyway. Uh, but I will at some point. I think uh, look him up again to see what what else he's done. Um, it was nice character development, heartwarming to a degree. Okay. So those are sort of the trades that I've read, uh, some of them anyway, in the last uh, year. The most recent ones being Archer and Armstrong and Exo Man of War. And uh, just one other thing I want to finish off with. Uh, if you really want to know uh, the comic book industry, what it's really about, uh, the different types of characters, players uh, involved in the comic book industry and the, the struggles in the comic book industry. There are, there are a few and this covers some of it, but uh, this is the legal defense funds, uh, sort of a monthly thing I think they put out. Uh, it's called the Defender, Comic Book Legal Defense Fund, the Defender. Uh, and I make it a point to pick this up whenever it's out to read it, okay? And it talks about defending comic books, uh, you know, censorship, what's going on politically, economically, to a certain degree, but it's more politics related. Uh, and it's important. And it, you know, they do amazing interviews. They did, you know, an issue, the first uh, one they put out, I don't, as far as I know, this just recently started. I don't remember seeing this in the 1990s or 80s or even 2000s. Uh, maybe I wasn't paying attention. I don't know. Uh, but I think this just recently started in 2015. And issue number one, they had an interview with Neil Gaiman. This issue, they have an interview with Frank Miller. And if you, you know, if you're in the comic book game for the long haul, uh, this is a good news newsletter. Uh, this is a good source of information of what's going on in the comic book industry, okay? And uh, geez, I think this was uh, everything that I wanted to cover. Um, sort of uh, most of the things that I'm picking up and reading and how I'm picking up books and how I decide to pick up something and add it to my pull box and how I follow up certain artists or certain storylines, right? Uh, you know, being a collector does consume time. Uh, but it is something that most of us collectors love doing. Actually, I can't see anybody doing this, being a collector, not loving it, right? Why would you do it? Uh, well, monetary gain maybe, but why would you do it, right? 
So that sort of uh, how I go about choosing the comics that I choose to read. And, you know, if, if you're not really, if a story arc is not really grasping you, never be afraid to let go of a title, to let go of a character, because as soon as you let go of something, you make room for other stories, other other experiences to come in, right? And comic books, you know, sort of mimics life in that manner. So never, never be afraid to let go of a title if you're not enjoying reading it anymore, right? And as soon as you do that, you make room for other titles and do a little exploring and go beyond uh, the mainstream in large part. The mainstream has some amazing stuff as well, of course, right? But there's a lot of independent comics being put out that are absolutely brilliant. And you're missing out if you're not reading them. Uh, and they're, they're, they're well worth your time and well worth your money, okay? Um, and that's about it. Uh, that's my little two cents of what I'm reading and why I'm reading certain things that I'm reading. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, post comments, I'll try to get to them. If you saw anything here that you want read or anything in my previous videos that I've shown that you want read, um, if I can, I'll fit it in into the next reading set. I've already started, you know, people have been commenting and leaving feedback and requesting certain reads. Uh, uh, and I've been putting a list together and, you know, I'm going to take a look at that list again once I revisit comic book readings and once, once we start putting um, comic video comic book videos out again right and um, you know I'll look through that list and I'll try to put a theme together you know most of the comic book readings I you know sets I've done we've done three so far I sort of tried to put a theme together a few different theme themes and layer them right um, you know so I'll look through the request list and what I do want to read and see what I can put together as a theme and, uh, and hopefully we'll have uh, some nice readings for the fourth reading set right um, i hope you enjoy it and i hope um, you read some amazing comics i'll see you guys in the next video bye for now